Goofy Dog, hello! First, only so far. Nasajen, hello! Zooms! Wings! Here we go. Here, here's people coming to the chat. Uh, Charlene! Monetization on. So I'm using a different uh, streaming service this uh, streaming app this time. Uh, I'm no longer using Gamecaster, which is what I was using forever, <laughs> what I've been using all along. Uh, I have abandoned that. I am now using uh, Streamlabs. Hi, JP. Uh, lasagna, lasagna stream? Never. Never happening. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully I don't have the same incredibly frustrating audio problems that I've had in the past. But we will see, I guess. Hey, bug. Nice setup. Thank you. Uh, infiltrators. Hello. Jimmy. Hello. Yeah, it's sort of been an off week for me. My, uh... I let my sleep patterns get totally out of whack, get totally screwed up. So like Wednesday, I like basically went to bed at like 4.30 in the afternoon. Just haven't been uh, a situation ready for the move. I mean, I'm never ready to move. Moving sucks. So I can't say that I'm ever going to be ready for it, but... Yeah, it'll happen. Hey, Mega. Hey, Charles. And, uh, more quick videos. Yeah, I know. I know, Charles. Uh, I desperately need to get back to that. It's... It's been tough to, like, get our shit together enough for it. Hey, Fuzzball! Fuck, no one has this feeling. I mean, some people do. Just, I never do. <laughs> Moving is just a pain in the ass. Don't wait until the last minute to pack. Oh, I will absolutely be waiting until the last minute to pack. 
Luckily, I don't actually have all that much that I need to pack. Realistically, like, I don't actually have all that much that I need to pack. Thought about starting a lasagna soon. I have not thought about it, Jimmy. How was my day? Uh, not too bad, Charles. Thanks. How's everyone else doing today? It was you know, pretty mediocre. I watched some random YouTube shit. All right, twenty odd viewers. Been seven minutes, so may as well get back to the game. Wait, didn't I do them all? I did them all last time. Weird. Weird, for some reason, it seems like it didn't actually... ...save after I did them all. What the game is about? Uh, growing up, basically. Yeah, I mean that's uh, the object of the game. It's a visual novel. Um, so basically, it's just about growing up. It's about your relationship with uh, with a boy named Cove, and uh, your relationship with your family and friends. And uh, it's just. Hello, Brook. So, yeah, I mean, it's basically just about being a kid. Sounds cool. I mean, I find it fun. I find this game fun. Obviously, you know, tastes will vary. <laughs> it's not, it's not an exciting game. It's not any sort of action-packed, there's nothing really... It's a very chill experience. Anyway, uh, it was a pleasant afternoon. The sun shone brightly and the breeze tugged lightly at the balloon strung around the park. You and Cove had just been dropped off at Miranda Eckert's birthday party. You didn't really know Miranda. Last year was the first time you had a class with her, and everyone at school knew her as quiet. The shy girl stuck to her own friend group like glue. It had been a surprise that she was having such a big party. You looked around the expansive park, a spacious recreation center in the next town over, and noticed a bouncy castle. Ooh, bouncy castle. Those are always fun. Who doesn't love a good bouncy castle, right? Miranda had a bit of a reputation for not caring if she acted mature like other teens sometimes did. It made a certain amount of sense that her party would match that. Maturity is overrated. You want to get to know Miranda better. Maybe at this party you'd have the chance to make friends with her. You were excited at the thought. You hadn't had a choice in coming here today. Your mom's insisted on it after you got the invitation, as did Cove's mom and dad. Do I think inmates should have access? Everybody should have access to a bounty castle, Jimmy. Bounty castles are a goddamn human right, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, both you and he were driven over to the next town with presents in tow. 
all the parents have been pretty firm about going to a birthday party if you'd been invited. Hey, Dandy. Shark Tank ad? <laughs> that is kind of weird. I guess my channel, there's just no algorithm to figure out what ads would fit uh, on my channel, I suppose. You were willing to give it a choice, or give it a chance. You had just arrived at the party after all. You couldn't see the future. It could turn out to be fun, or it could be a disaster, which can also be its own kind of fun sometimes. You would wait and see. Vitty scary advertis advertisement. Cove made a small noise which got your attention. He looked around, scanning the area. He fidgeted with his gift in hand. So... Any idea what we're supposed to do with these? You looked at your own present and then towards the seating area. There was a table filled with snacks and drinks, supplies for the various party games. Past all of that, you spotted one table in the back that seemed to have a truckload of gifts. You pointed it out to Cove. Let's drop the presents off over there. Cove nodded with a smile and turned to where you gestured. He saw it too. Cool. You and Cove began to walk over the, to the present table, flattening the well-trimmed grass beneath your feet. You walked past groups of people. Classmates in semicircles, broken up into the usual friend groups, chatted away. You, or maybe Cove, received the occasional greeting or friendly nod. However, as you passed by even more people that you had never seen before, you became aware there were more strangers here than not. It was more crowded than you expected. Miranda Eckert, the quiet girl, was hosting the most populated birthday party you had been to in a long time. Are those hot dogs? Or am I wrong? Hey, J Dot. Welcome. Uh, you looked at the new faces and thought you saw something of Miranda in them. Cousins, nieces, or nephews, maybe? Parties could be a big deal in her family. The both of you reached the table. I'm okay, J-Dot. Thanks for asking. How are you? Uh, you set your gift down in an empty space, brushing some confetti aside, and Cove placed his gently next to it. He looked at the present thoughtfully. Hey. What did you get her? Before he had a chance to answer, Cove opened his mouth again and tapped his gift. I found the sparkly backpack. I figured she could use it for school or a trip or something. Getting over jet lag? Ah, yes, Danny, that's where you were. I knew you were visiting family. Turkey. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, did you have a nice time in Turkey, Dandy? I know everyone missed you while you were, uh, while you were away. Everyone missed your presence in my chats. Nachos, corn of the cob, and tea. Cool. I haven't actually eaten dinner yet. Uh, your mom's had taken you out shopping the other day. You'd search through the store and ultimately... Can never go wrong with a stuffed animal. The wide eyes of the otter plush had called to you. You weren't sure what in its face made you think of Miranda, but it seemed appropriate. Your mom said agreed that it was a fine present, and Ma helped you wrap it. Wrap it. Uh, you described it to Cove briefly, and he had no objections. Went there to get LASIK, actually? Oh. Oof. So how are your eyes doing now, Dandy? his hands against the side of his pants. I really hope Miranda likes her gifts, but I think we both did good. Eh, that's not what it, uh. 
Any objections to me turning the... Uh... What? Oh shit, I hit the wrong person. Sorry, J Dot, I meant to hit the person beneath you. <laughs> I uh, I apologize about that, J Dot. I did not mean to hit you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was uh, I was blocking somebody else. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. You are now uh, sorry. You are now unbanned, J Dot. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Jade. Uh, I very, very briefly hid you. <laughs> I was going for the other person who said... Whose name was... Whose name is stupid and who was clearly just trying to stir shit up. Went to Ban World temporarily. What was it? Tell us about your experience in Ban World, J Dot. Was it horrible? Was it horrifying? What sort of monsters were there? <laughs> With that, he gave you a sunny grin. You touched the gift one more time and then stepped away. Uh, without the direction of needing to put stuff away, the two of you weren't sure what to do next. He felt a little awkward, and Cove shrunk in on himself as he looked around. Cut pie! Kitty pie! Cutty pie! Hi, cutty pie! Ooh, Netherlands, cool. Uh, there were more guests, uh, heading to the present table, so you turned away and wandered over to a nearby tree where you wouldn't be in the way. Dark and empty place. With lots of Wendy's chili. From there, you both inspected the area and planned the next step. You were glad that Cove had been invited too. At least you had his company in this unfamiliar place. You watched him and he gave you a nervous grin. It reassured you a little and you smiled back. What next? Cove did not appreciate being put on the spot. He was just as unsure as you were. Birthday party stuff? It didn't seem to be time for cake, what with people still arriving. Nothing else seemed to be organizing yet, either. He noticed that himself and tried again. We could find Miranda? That was an idea. It made sense to greet the birthday girl. Okay, we could say hello. Wish her happy birthday. Ask her what she wants people to do. Yeah, there's a smart Sounds move. Sounds good. Game okay, I playing? Uh, this game is called, uh, Our Life Beginnings and Always. Uh, Apple Store? I have no idea, Cutty Pie. Like, I have no idea. I have it on Steam. I have no idea if it'd be through, uh, available through App, uh, Apple Store. It's, uh, a visual novel. With that point, it was decided. The Miranda Hunt had begun. You wandered around. Anytime you saw someone with Miranda's hair color, you got a little closer. Uh, anime movie? What movie, J-Dot? Uh, what movie is it, J-Dot? Sims 4? Nah. Sims bores me, uh, Sakura. Like, I played The Sims 2. I, I had Sims 2, and I found it boring. And I've heard that Sims 4 is just, is like, legitimately just bad. Like, The Sims 4 is just shit unless you, uh, either spend a whole ton of money on, uh, expansion packs, or just, like, mod the hell out of it. Uh, anyway, anytime you saw someone with Miranda's hair color, you got a little closer, but more than once it turned out to not actually be her. Sekire? I have never heard of that one, J Dot. I'll be honest. Hey, look! Finally, he pointed over to the real Miranda. She smiled slightly when you both approached, but ducked her head. 
She seemed a little overwhelmed with being the center of attention today. Hi, Cove. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, she is. She seems to be small. Yeah, you know, 13 years old, but she looks 10. Well, thank you for not interrupting, Petri. Feel free to interrupt. I mean, feel free. If you see me in public, feel free to say hi. Uh, I don't think I'm interested in watching that, Dandy, but thank you. PUBG? Mm. You love Miranda? Yeah, she seems sweet. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thanks! I'm really glad you could come. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Thursday Lane's niece, Irib. Hi, Leaf Mud. You all stood awkwardly. Miranda did seem genuinely happy, but there was still a distance between you. This is a great looking party. Thank you. Is there something we need to do, or should we just hang out? Oh, well, you can talk to people if you want. There are games that are going to start soon. I do wish they did more voice acting in this game. And the bounce house should open later if you feel like jumping. Then, after that, it's cake and present time. We'll have ice cream, too. After that is when people will start going home. I hope that's okay with you guys. Cove nodded. He seemed a little more confident about the situation now. Stay away from starches. I mean, I like potatoes. Uh, okay, shout out to Jimmy's Uncle Levi. Animation says, I mean, there are no sub, uh, there are no uh, animations, uh, Alexis. Leaf Mud, thank you very much, Leaf Mud. How am I? Uh, I'm doing okay, Leaf Mud. Um, feeling better today than I did the past few days. Neck isn't sore. I've really screwed up my uh, sleep patterns and got my neck really sore as a result. Uh, Grep, why do I keep losing subs? Uh, Grep, I would say it's probably because I'm boring. I suspect uh, I'm just... I lose subs by being boring. Uh, Cuddy, I did not have dinner yet. Thanks for letting us know. You grinned at her and she nodded back. Miranda waited there and you became hyper aware of the silence forming. You heard a shout for a Randy and Miranda brightened up. A total 180 with how stiff she had been with you. I gotta talk to some more people. Bye! Do some voice acting or audiobook readings. For voice acting, I don't know that I... Like, voice acting generally requires, like, being able to do different voices. That I'm not sure that I can really do well. More to the point, like, I nobody would pay me for that. Nobody would pay me to do uh, voice acting. <laughs> Audiobook recordings, you know, kind of same thing. I, mean, I don't think anyone would really pay for... pay me for that, so... The birthday girl ran off to her friend, leaving you and Cope with at least a little more idea of what to expect. You both glanced at each other wordlessly. You felt a little disappointed. It was going to be hard to get to know Miranda better with how in demand she was probably going to be today. Could hear me reading some children's books? But would I want to read children's books?
I have no opinions on it, Dandy. Uh, Doc. I did not just wake up. I woke up around, uh... Woke up around noon today, actually. If I look tired, it's just because I'm always tired. Hopefully you would get to talk with her later. Just as a Ramona and read books to kids at the hospital. Ugh. I don't want to... I don't want... I don't like kids, though. Built like a bag of milk. I don't know entirely what that means, but it amuses me just because I'm Canadian. <laughs> uh, Stephen King. I have never read any Stephen King. I'm not into horror. All that was left now is finding something to fill time until the activities began. You found a quiet spot to sit. Co followed you to the edge of the party. He pointed out a bench near a tree, and you both sat down. Nice leaf mud. Cool. Uh, Cutty Pie? I haven't bought any new books lately. Uh, I'm still making my way through this one. I haven't been reading in the past few days. So I've fallen behind on my, uh, reading of, uh... Early Chinese Empires. Qin and Han. Uh, if I could do audiobook reading, what genre would it be? Um, I don't know. I suppose probably fantasy, because I enjoy fantasy. But, I don't know. Sekire is an anime series on DVD. Okay. Uh, it was far enough away from the crowd that it was peaceful, as long as you blocked out the sound of kids shrieking. Suddenly, a loud voice boomed over the crowd. The constant buzz of conversation dropped as one of the adults, maybe Miranda's dad, asked the kids to gather around because it was game time. Huh. I wonder what's gonna happen. Chinese history. I like I like reading history, and I don't really know that much about Chinese history, to be honest. Joke about something you made a joke about something that wasn't going to happen. We're gonna play high stakes poker. It's obvious. Obvious, huh? Look at this crowd. Most of the guests were teenagers around your age, but there were also quite a few adults and some younger kids. Cove nodded sagely at a group of little kids. Yeah, these are high rollers. Fantasy games? The WoW? World of Warcraft? Eh. This shirt was just washed today, Jurgen. Like, literally, like this t-shirt was just washed today. Just out of the washer a couple hours ago. German history about World War. See, any any history later than, like... <laughs> like, I feel like any history later than... Like... the Europeans reaching the Americas do honestly doesn't really interest me. Is anything from the past like 500 years isn't really the type of history that interests me all that much. I prefer older stuff. Uh, would I date a trans dad? No, because I'm not interested. I'm not attracted to men. I'm not attracted to men, so no. No reason for me to date a trans dad. The adult announced that the children under 10 had the first turn on the Bountess. For everyone else, it was time to play Pin the Tail on the Donkey. We got a lot about it here in Europe. I mean... I suppose get a lot about it in most places. Canada? Yeah, Canada as well. Though I think Canada might be prouder of World War I of our role in World War One, Like, just thinking back to school, I feel like Canada actually makes a bigger deal out of our role in World War One than we do about World War Two as a whole. Because we definitely, like, yeah, 
we did some pretty cool stuff. We, you know, we did some pretty notable stuff in the First World War. Less so in the second one. That said, we actually did do some really cool stuff in the uh, Second World War. Uh, Netherlands, I think. Hey, Killface. Uh, J-Dot, my favorite is Cowboy Bebop. Would be my favorite uh, anime series. Cove raised his eyebrows. He was surprised for sure. Eh, he thought it was kind of silly. It was such a kid's game. The fact that this was planned for a party full of teens was a little crazy. Uh, Indonesia was mostly a colony of was a colony of the Netherlands. Hey, Chef Cook. Hey, Shan. Actually, I'm trying to think. Um, was it the Netherlands that I'm thinking of? Ben Shapiro. No, Ben Shapiro sucks. So I want to double check something here. Yeah, another one. So yeah, uh, we... Canada was really good towards the Netherlands in World War II. I was, uh, I was, I was pretty sure it was the Netherlands I was trying to think of, but... Uh, yeah. We were really good uh, towards the... Uh, your mom is from Suriname? Wish there was a better Berserk anime. Zero, Jurgen. Well, that's a lie, Hassa. Suriname is North American, is it? More accurately, Killface, I'm not attracted to men. Uh, you reluctantly joined the line since that was what you were supposed to do, and you didn't feel like arguing. The donkey in question was a cartoony poster with big eyes that looked more like ping pong balls. It was positioned a few feet above the ground on a tree trunk. The teen who arrived first was blindfolded and then spun around. He was nudged to the sign and away from the other kid, so he wouldn't stick someone with the tail instead. Unfortunately for him, he placed the tail on the donkey's head like some kind of bizarre earring. He wouldn't be winning that far from the target. Uh, his next opponent did far better by landing on the donkey's back. The spectators clapped politely and the line moved up. More teens tried their hand at it. Some got closer than others, but no one had gotten it perfect yet. Soon it was Cove's turn. Jimmy, uh, I am open to dating a trans woman. He was blindfolded and spun just like the others. At this point, it was a close match and everyone was watching with bated breath. Cove approached the donkey and stuck the tail on without any hesitation. Exactly, kill face. Dandy, holy shit. Uh, is it true you're seriously contemplating on moving to the Tenacious Unicorn Ranch in Colorado? I think you should, and vlog about it every single day. Is that some sort of... gay ranch dandy? Is that some kind of, like... But no, dandy. Uh, I have never given any serious thought to moving to the U.S. Anywhere in the U.S. Not moving to Colorado. No. 
All the girls has power, lives and apartment together and all that stuff. Cool. That does sound pretty cool. Cove stood back and removed his blindfold, cheering when he saw how close he was. He turned his head over his shoulder and grinned at you. <laughs> Your turn. All right, I'll take my turn. With the blindfold on, the bright park became utterly dark. As you were spun around, the sounds around you seemed to get louder. At least you could tell the direction of the bounce house from the shrieks of the younger children. You stopped spinning and stepped forward, tail in hand. It was time to give it a stab. Hmm. To the left. You press the tail into the target and set back. You took your blindfold off to check your results. Uh, there was some more clapping from the audience. Well, sometimes I like dancing houses. <laughs> dancing houses are awesome. Don't stab the castle. Uh, anyway, there's more, some more clapping from the audience. The tail wasn't too far off. Behind you, there was a particularly enthusiastic ooh, and a few people mentioned how close you got. You smiled and looked back at Cove. He seemed amused. His tail wasn't off by much either, and you couldn't tell which of you was winning. They were just too nearby each other. A few more kids took their turn. One girl managed to somehow pin the tail on the opposite side of the tree. You're pretty sure it had to be on purpose. Sekiro? I don't think so, uh... I don't think so, Chef Cook. With the line empty, the game was finally over. The adult running things started to inspect the donkey. At this point, the sign was more tails than donkey. In the end, Cove was announced the winner with lots of smiles and applause. He grinned and seemed pretty proud of himself. He was handed a fistful of candy from the man in charge. Uh, Cove needed both of his hands to accept it all. Go, Cove! Whee! Thanks! He tucked the candy into his pockets. It filled more than one. You congratulated, Cove. You did really good. Really well! He did really well! I haven't started any pills yet, Fabrizio. Thanks. I feel kind of sorry for the donkey, though. You both looked at the multi-tailed monstrosity and winced as you pictured how that would be on a real-life creature. Rammer, please. I did! I am, Killface. I am. I didn't ask. It was his, and you didn't need any. There would be other treats later. An older teen walked up, tall enough to tower over you and Cove. You felt a little intimidated by the stern-faced teenager until she started to speak. Her voice was low, but friendlier than her tough friend would suggest. Hi, I'm handing up party favors. Do you want one? She showed you party hats. She insisted they were the key to a true partying mood. She had two options, either a colorful headband with two tiny party hats arranged almost like ears, or a tiara with a star on it. They were both very festive. It's okay. You knew the teen hadn't actually glared at him. Her default facial expression just seemed grim. I want a crown. Give me a tiara. You pointed to the crown, and the teenager passed it over to you with the solemnness of a crowning a monarch. Then you let her go. 
Both of you ma had made your decisions, and that was it. Yeah, different kind of party, Jimmy. Different kind of, kind of party favors. The unknown teenager nodded approvingly at you both and went to pass out hats to more people. You put the party hat on your head with a smile and it fit well. It was surprisingly comfortable. It really completes your look. When did you get so fashionable? He smirked, he smirked and you just adjusted your new accessory. It does look very good on me, thanks. It's like you're reading me a bedtime story. Hey, Billy. His hair is very Byleth post time skip. I wish I knew what that meant. You looked him straight in the eye and he seemed unsure of how to handle that reaction to his statement. He floundered for a second until he came up with a response. You don't have to brag. You struck a pose and he rolled his eyes. After that, the people in charge quickly set up the next game. Teenagers milled about until they were told to find partners. You tried to listen to the rules, straining your ears to listen to the adult announcing what you were supposed to do. Okay. Thanks, uh, well, thanks for stopping by, at least, Irene. Uh, I'll have a regular live again tomorrow, presumably. Hi, Karina. Hey, Amy. Uh, it was a simple game. One person in a pair would throw candy, while the other had to catch it in their mouth. If they caught it, the pair would move on to the next round where everyone would take a step back and the former catcher would become the thrower. Favorite birthday cake? Uh, I don't know, I just like carrot cake, which isn't really a birthday cake. The game would continue, the players getting further and further until one set of partners were the only ones left standing or everyone lost in a round. About half of the guests had already found partners. They moved fast. You noticed Cove had his eyes on you. Could we be partners? Neither of you are all that familiar with anyone else here. It'd be the safe choice to pair up. Of course, absolutely. Free to be Co's partner. <laughs> That's funny, Dandy. Don't do that. Wait, American Psycho and the men who stare at what kind of weird-ass double feature is that? Uh, no, Cutty Pie. My birthday is February. Let's do it, partner. Cool. He beamed at you. He beamed, and you start wondering about your respective candy catching a bit capabilities. Two rows of players facing each other formed. Cove tilted his head towards them, and you started to head over. You both lined up directly in front of each other. It took a while to pass out the candy. You were handed a small bag of gummies that smelled strongly fruity. Hey, Ravishing! Uh, you noticed Cove took it upon himself to do a taste test of a red one across from you. Mm. They're not bad. I did not, Fabrizio. I do. I have never done that, Fabrizio. See, I would never steal someone's clothes because I know how frustrating it is to have your own clothes to have your clothes stolen. I would never do that to somebody else because it it does suck. What did it taste like? Raspberry. Or cherry. It's red, so... Strawberry? Uh, maybe? maybe? Pomegranate. It was a mystery. Maybe you'd get a red one later. It's not my birthday, Leaf Mud. And then it was time to begin. Cove's row was set to throw first. He smiled nervously, his eyes wide with seriousness. You grinned, and Cove's smile looked more genuine and less filled with tenseness. The game was on.
uh, the adult in charge then it shouted for the throwers to go. You and Cove were only a couple feet away from each other. With Cove's careful toss, you caught the candy easily. Like you, most of the other players moved on to the next round. There were a few gaps in the rows as everyone took a step back. The round was harder with pairs, pairs further apart, but not overly so. It could be done if both partners tried. You did your best as you tossed it. You carefully plucked a gummy from the bag and felt the weight. You shifted in your hand a couple of times for practice, and then told Cove you were ready. You went for an underhand throw, careful to aim for Cove's mouth. The blue candy arced and landed perfectly in Cove's mouth. Like popping balloons between your thighs. I couldn't do that. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to do that, Billy. It'd just be like... I don't know. I'd be too scared to do it. He chewed it twice and then smiled widely. Uh, you could tell Cove was genuinely pleased to make it through another round. You were happy as well. The next round began, and you took another step back. Cove was even further away now, but he made an okay sign. He was in this to win it. Around you, the once packed rows of players had thinned out some. You wondered how many rounds everyone had left in them. Cove swung his arm and made eye contact with you. You nodded, and the green candy flew towards you. You tried your best to catch it. You followed the arc of the candy and opened your mouth wide. It had a slight spin on it, and you tilted your head to the left to compensate. You bit down on the grant candy, grinning with your victorious catch. It tasted sweet, and vaguely like a Slurpee. Uh, J-Dot, I don't think- I don't know what you look like, J-Dot, sorry. I can't really tell, because I don't know what you look like. Yeah! Jamie! Cove was thrilled. He was entirely invested in the game at this point. You and Cove were still in the game. You knew this was the final round. Only a few other pairs were still left. Cove was determined to win. You could see it in the clench of his jaw, the careful way he watched you. You didn't want to let him down. Uh, is the, McCris is the McCrispy actually good? I have no idea. I've never had the McCrispy. <laughs> How's Chantel doing? Uh, she's fine. I think she might be live, uh, as well. This game meant something to Cove, and you respected that. You were going to be here for your partner, and if you wanted to win, well, you needed to try your best. Cove gave you a firm grin, and you prepared to throw. Your fingers grabbed an orange gummy from the bag. It felt solid in your grasp, even if your hand was starting to get sticky from touching all the sugary sweets. Uh, Cove leaned his face towards you and bent his knees, ready to catch. The time came. You looked at the candy, and then Cove. Uh, El Gato? No. Uh, for, for today, for this, I'm using uh, Streamlabs. You tried your best. You heard him make a small squeak, uh, and Cove blinked as the orange candy bounced off of his face. You laughed. Cove's expression was just too priceless. But you both were out of the game, so you walked over to the crowd of other people who lost. The game wrapped up, and you clapped for the winning pair, two tiny girls around your age. They were handed more candy as a prize, and everyone dispersed from there. With the candy toss over, you are going to need something else to do. You didn't have to wait long. You heard someone in the crowd shout that the bounce house was officially open for the older kids. Sorry, J Dot, it's just, you know. How can I how can I How can I say yes when I don't actually know? You know? 
Am I just supposed to lie? I thought women appreciated the truth, you know? Guys who were honest. You and Cove shared a look. Cove smiled, and you knew he wanted in. You both ran over to the bounty castle and kicked your shoes off. You crawled into the inflated castle with Cove hot on your heels. There were a couple other teams inside already. You started to get a feel for Bouncy. Cove hopped from the middle to, to the side and back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, J. Dot. I'm sorry. Uh, just after you landed from a particularly high jump, someone else snuck in. It was a birthday girl herself. Hi, Miranda. Hello. Miranda looked happy. She waved both her hands at you with a megawatt grin. I hope you're having fun. She hopped around with her hands in front of her like a kangaroo. It was a surprisingly effective way to clear the distance, clear distance in the bounce house. She then jumped high, kicking both her legs out to the side and touched the tips of her toes with her fingers. Dang. Girls got moves. Wow. Miranda hadn't run out of tricks yet. She jumped a couple more times, gaining height, before doing a backflip and tucking into a ball. She managed to land on her feet, but didn't stick the landing. She tumbled back and fell on her butt. Eh. Cove clapped and Miranda inclined her head, almost like a bow. She was back to jumping in no time. <laughs> You're so good at this. She bounced close enough to the two of you to talk without shedding across the way. Cove's bouncing slowed down to accommodate their conversation. My family gets these every year. And we have a trampoline in the backyard. That's really cool. Miranda giggled a bit, and then her eyes sparkled. Hey, I can launch someone if you want. If I jump in front of you, then your bounce will go higher. Okay, launch me! Sure. Miranda leaped over to you, her excitement clear in her face. Cove watched with interest. She explained more clearly how this was supposed to work. You got ready to bounce on her cue. Three, two, one! The moment she came down, you jumped high. The force of her, just as she had said, helped launch you up. The air rushed past your face, and then you were coming back down. Your feet hit the bounce house hard enough to help launch Miranda up a little as well. She giggled some more, and the two of you took turns bouncing each other up. Cove clapped or offered suggestions, but it was becoming clear that he wanted a turn too. Uh, Miranda invited him to join and tried to synchronize your bounces to launch Cove up super high. The first time resulted into everyone crashing down in a pile of laughs. By the fifth attempt, Cove managed to catch some serious airtime. Woo! You all had fun bouncing around. You twirled, Miranda did stunts, Cove futilely tried to touch the highest tip in the castle ceiling. You and Cove chatted to Miranda more than you ever had at school. She truly was the queen of this bounty castle. Whenever, did someone, whenever someone did something cool, everyone would cheer. If you fell, the others would help you up. Eventually, more people wanted to take turns in the bounce house, so you and Cove left. As you slipped on your shoes, you saw Miranda get drawn into conversation with a group of adults. She would be talking to them for a while. Uh, would I take a wheelchair? Uh, I don't think so, Chef Cook. i not really interest, interested in that. You and Cove decided to take a break and hydrate. You went to the party table and grabbed some ice water. Cove blew you a, handed you a party noise maker he'd picked up from the side ta same table. He blew in his and it made a funny sound when it unrolled. Dandy, I mean, she, like, and she sometimes thinks about it as just, like, it'd be too much of a shit show for her to do open chat on a regular basis. Cove downed his drink in a couple gulps. He had gotten pretty into bouncing after all. 
You were still sipping on your water when Cove blew in his noisemaker again. Then again. And again. It was almost a tune. You don't recognize any particular melody, but a noisemaker also isn't an instrument. The noise cut through the hum of the other party guests, loud and noticeable. You started blowing in your no own noisemaker. You put your noisemaker up to your lips and started making your own noise. Cove turned to face you and blew the paper of his nose noisemaker at you. It was a hair's breadth away from touching you. Oh great, you people again. Yeah, maybe, Dandy. Someone vaguely familiar shouted and you snapped your head to the side. Cove's noisemaker dropped from his mouth. The speaker stepped up and there was no doubt. It was Jeremy, that mean boy you met at the start of summer. Ghoul titties! Hi, ghoul titties! Welcome! DQ? Dragon Quest, I'm guessing? Uh, I've never played any of those games. You tried being polite. Hi, how are you? Your greeting went unacknowledged and Jeremy's scowl didn't change. Why are you here? Cove's tone was defensive. You watched Jeremy's face turn slack as if Cove's question was the idiocy above all idiocies. Uh, suppository, Fabrizio. Dairy Queen? Oh. Didn't I already explain this? He hadn't, so both you and Cove exchanged a look. Do you have memory loss, or are you really that stupid? Seriously. I didn't walk here. My parents brought me. Apparently, I couldn't just stay inside like I wanted. No, they insist that I get out and enjoy the day and have fun on vacation. Blah, blah, blah. He said enjoy the day and have fun on vacation, like some people would say scrub the entire bathroom or listen to an off-key singer for 10 hours. I mean... That's kind of how I... Yeah. I'm kind of like that. Jimmy, what's a suppository? It's a pill that goes in your butt! No, Dandy, I follow the medically recommended uh, guidelines. Persona? Nah. They found a park because I hate the beach. Too bad I also hate parks. Ugh, it's dirty here. They don't know anything. Oh, and then they saw this stupid party and decided to bother some adults by asking what was going on. They think maybe we could be included. It's moronic. Get it now? That's how my parents are. Annoying and embarrassing. Why would anybody want strangers at their party? Why can't they ever just leave things alone? Doing his voice is hard on my throat. He huffed loudly, and his eyes shot daggers at some grown-ups that presumably were his parents. And all you can do is complain about it. Sucks to be you. Shut up. Jeremy's eyes slipped away from you to take in the rest of the park for a bit. It was a little awkward. It was possible he didn't know what to do, but then he spoke again. So dumb. How can people really go around in those embarrassing party hats? Do they think it's fun or something? How can a human being be human beings be so dumb? Can I never take him ketamine? No. Uh, 
two jobs so I'm taking a third. Oof. That sucks, ghoul titties. That's rough. Jeremy shook his head and glanced at Cove's lack of hat. I guess that's one brain point for you. It's just kind of nice to do party stuff. Jeremy scoffed, unimpressed. The expression on his face was nasty as he spoke. I am not surprised an empty-headed person like you would think that. Jeremy looked you over, completely dismissive. It's so rude you can't help but feel offended. Ko's face hardened. He seemed more offended than when anyone actually insulted him personally. I've been there. Yeah, I, uh, thanks, Leaf Mud. Uh, I would need a lot more, uh... I'd need a lot more people in my chat for mods to feel worthwhile. Hey. Just because you don't know how to be happy doesn't mean no one else does. And it's not our fault if you hate everything. It's not okay for you to take it out on Jamie. They aren't doing anything wrong. You are. Jeremy seemed unfazed by Cove's defense and sniffed. Huh. Jamie can humiliate themselves on their own. They don't need you to step in and do it for them. You drowned out his noise, his words with your noisemaker. Really about the only way to deal with a douchebag like this kid. You're both doot. You're doot doot doot. It didn't take long for him to piece together that you weren't going to let him speak without interruption. Stupid. He shut his mouth, though, and finally stopped talking. You're a dick! People were starting to watch what was going down. Your argument wasn't exactly quiet at this point. Why don't you just leave us alone if we're so awful? Jeremy glared even more and huffed. Dumbasses. Talking to you is pointless. Dumbasses. He stalked off like the last time you saw him, muttering under his breath. You blew, blew your noisemaker after, uh, noise after him with a final long... Dude. Cove sighed in relief after Jeremy was gone. He relaxed, but only for a moment. He noticed just how much attention he'd drawn from the other guests. Luckily, he hadn't gone on long enough to get a real crowd. A concerned adult in a blue button-up shirt approached you and asked who that was and if everyone was alright. It's right. okay. I'm fine. Cove looked at you cautiously, asking just as much as the adult if you were okay. Everything's fine now. You don't have to worry about us. The concerned adult lingered for a few seconds, but nodded and left you alone. The Jeremy fiasco was officially over. Cove rubbed his eyes, clearly ready to put all that nonsense behind him. Then he started laughing. It was a surprised laugh, breaking out of his chest without any actual joy. It was nervous and disbelieving, and all the complex emotions brought, by one, brought about by one meeting with Jeremy. I can't believe it. He spoke in fits and starts. You swore at him. The look on your face after you said it with the... It was hilarious. Yeah, that kid. Betty Boop. I've never watched any of the Betty Boop cartoon. Uh... I have read a bit of a webcomic about... Uh, was it Mr. Betty Boop? Betty Boop's husband? Like this really weird ass uh, sort of fan comic strip that somebody did about a dude who was married to Betty Boop. And Worked with Bugs Bunny, who wanted to sleep with Betty Boop, and... It was weird. 
You can't just say things and get away with it. Cove nodded to himself and then continued speaking. I mean... I wouldn't want someone to do it for me, but it's not like I can blame you. He was treating us so bad for no reason. I'm pretty sure he'll be okay. I bet it won't even change anything for him. Cove paused and shyly twisted his fingers together. Then in a quieter voice he spoke. And if you're bad for doing it, I'm bad too, because I kind of liked watching you do it, Jamie. He became bashful, barely able to meet your eyes as he smiled softly, sh shyly. But only because he deserved it. I wouldn't want that to happen to someone out of nowhere or anything. You laughed happily over Cove's admission. Um, do you want to tell your moms? About Jeremy, I mean? You gonna say what you did back at him? They'd probably be nice about it, and maybe they'd know how to handle someone like him. Cove bit his lip and thought. Uh, I, like, I did, like, a decade ago, Jimmy, and I'm not going to tell you where to find them. Hey, Icky. Uh, the other game? You mean Boyfriend Dungeon? Not playing that one because cause I finished it. I completed Boyfriend Dungeon, so no point playing it. I'm not going to tell him anything if you don't. Thanks for asking. You decided to bring it up to your moms later. I'll let them know everything. All right. You thought back to your retaliation and winced internally. You were probably going to get in trouble. Why? I handled it peacefully. Not bad trouble, not as long as your moms knew you'd been picked on first, but some trouble. Finally, you bent over to pick up the noisemaker that Cove dropped when Jeremy appeared. It might be too dirty to use now, but he didn't want to leave it there. He accepted it softly when you offered the little favor back to him. Thanks, Jamie. I like how we can be there for each other. It makes me feel better about that kind of stuff when it happens. Yeah. Cove suggested that you should find a seat at one of the tables. It was almost cake time and he wanted to be prepared. It was a good reminder that the party wasn't over yet. There's a free table. There's a free table there. Let's get ready for some cake. 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 You and Cove tried to settle down after the last event. You took seats across from one another at one of the park tables. There were a few attempts to chat, but for the most part, you simply watched the adults run around to set up the cake cutting. There was a minor panic when you, who you assumed was Miranda's dad, apparently forgot the lighter for the candles. He and another man went through and started asking the other adults for matches or lighters. They weren't having any luck until the grim-faced teenager who had been passing out party hats pulled out a pulled a green lighter out of the ice cream cooler. Wait, who keeps a lighter in an ice cream cooler? Why the lighter was put in the cooler remained a mystery. Yeah, but with party hat girls fine, it was time to get things going again. Uh, Miranda sat at, the head of, sat at the head of the longest table. A large chocolate cake was set in front of her. She lit all 14 candles with the cooler lighter with a big smile. The adults started singing happy birthday and the rest of the guests joined in. At the end of the song, Miranda blew out the candles with a dedicated huff. She closed her eyes and you saw her silently mouth something. Maybe it was a birthday wish. Miranda cut her own slice, then one of the grown-ups took over cutting the cake. Another adult passed around plates of cake slices with a scoop of vanilla ice cream to the guests. Eventually, the cake got around to you and Cove. Uh, Cove was pleased with the treat in general. The cake looked rich and moist. It smelled quite chocolatey. Suppose both cake and ice cream. You took a bite of ice cream. Van the vanilla wasn't bad, but it was a little bland. The chocolate cake, however, was a rich flavor. Vanilla isn't bland. <laughs> Cove then took his fork and started mashing up some of his cake. When the cake resembled a pile of crumbly chunks, he started mixing it into the, cho into the ice cream. The melted parts of the ice cream made a kind of chocolate cake soup.
you didn't react. So what if he was mixing his dessert? That wasn't your business. Cove contentedly chowed down on his concoction. One advantage to his mix is that the ice cream seemed to catch most of the crumbs that would usually fall from eating a cake. Unlike some of the kids around him, Cove's shirt remained clean. You started eating your dessert in earnest. You enjoyed yourself plenty. Cove suddenly put his fork down on his plate and stared up to the sky with a faraway expression. You checked, but didn't see anything attention-grabbing. This ice cream is better than those ones in cups. You know, with the little wooden spoons? But I still kind of want that instead. You remembered what kind he was talking about. Oh yeah, like the ones handed out at the barbecue before the fireworks happened. Right. Cove smiled nostalgically at the thought. You could picture a younger Cove for a moment with the same look in his eyes. You remembered how your ma tried to share with everyone that night. You offered him a bite of your dessert. Do you want any of mine? Cove raised his eyebrows at your offer. What? You laughed along with them. Your shared laughter attracted the attention of some of the other party guests. It took a moment to compose yourselves and get back to your dessert. Miranda then started to open her gifts. She systematically attacked the mountain of presents like a pro. She checked for any cards and read them loudly before opening a gift. She smiled at every present, including the ones you and Cove got her. You were glad the presents were accepted. It took time, but eventually Miranda got through all the gifts. She was very sweet and polite through it all. The party went until the sun began to set. By that point, most of everything had settled down and people had begun to leave. Any of the guests whose parents had stayed for the party were already gone, except for Miranda's family. Only a few kids still waiting for their parents to come get them remained, you and Cove included. Miranda's family were cleaning up, and as a guest, neither you nor Cove were supposed to help with that. Instead, you both had decided to take it easy in the Bounty Castle. It was somewhere out of the way where you could actually, where you could casually wait for your ride. Leafman? I didn't! I got a new, uh, program. I changed to, uh, I abandoned Game, uh, Gamecaster and switched over to, uh, Streamlabs. Miranda had also elected to hang out with you. You weren't even bouncing anymore. Cove laid on his side with his back to a wall, and Miranda sat across from him with her legs stretched out. You also made yourself comfortable. It was nice and warm in the little building. It also felt like you had some privacy, which was nice. You could all speak openly here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. She looked down, but continued shyly. It's been really cool to get to hang out with you a little bit. Thanks for letting me come. I didn't think I'd be invited. Uh, yes, Icky. Because I happen to already have Streamlabs uh, downloaded. Thanks for me too, Miranda. Miranda just smiled a little more. So... Did you notice anything happening earlier with some people you don't know showing up? She had to think about his question a little. It was apparent that she didn't have an encounter with Jeremy, since there was no instant recognition. Mm. I heard about something. Some other parents were talking to my parents when their kid came and forced them to leave the park. She tilted her head to the side, finding it weird but also not important. Then everyone had cake and ice cream! That's what matters. Cove smiled uncomfortably. That's good. He was clearly worried that the Jeremy confrontation could have gotten to her. Luckily, it didn't seem that anyone had overheard or passed along Jeremy's cruel words. Cove rolled over on his back and sighed contentedly. Miranda seemed confused but wasn't going to push. You changed the subject. What are you going to do with all those gifts? It had been a mountain of stuff. Miranda laughed. Well, 
Welcome back, Jada. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find a way to get them all in my room. Cove gave a bent smile and made a suggestion. You can carry some in that backpack you got. She giggled and clapped her hands with delight. That's true. Uh, you all continued chatting in a laid-back manner until it was time to go home. At the end of the day, you thought it had been quite the party. Hurrah! Jada? Not sure. I think she probably is. Alright, summer work. You stared out the window watching the scenery pass by as your mom drove down the quiet streets at a leisurely pace. A singer crooned sweetly from the radio, turned low enough that you could block it out if you wanted. You turned away from the window when your mom suddenly spoke up. Well, kids, are you excited to be going to the library? Yeah, can't wait to get there. Mom laughed, catching your eye in the rearview mirror and winking. I don't know why I asked. I already know how you feel about it. Taking a trip down to the library had always been something you enjoyed. So? What about you, Cove? You're a part of the conversation, too. Yeah. I like the library, and I can work better there than at home. Sounds good. Well, I'm happy this will be of use to you. Just make sure you're not distracted by one another. That would defeat the purpose of the trip. She grinned over at you briefly, so you knew she was kidding and meant nothing by it. Hey, Clunker. Mom refocused on driving, humming along with the radio under her breath. You went back to staring outside. As you passed one street, you caught a glimpse of someone in brightly colored clothing passing out balloon animals. It sparked a faraway memory, and you felt your lips twitching up before consciously remembering why. How long ago was it that you and Cove watched The Amazing Alexander performing magic tricks? Hey Cove, do you remember that Maybe. one guy? Maybe I do. Alexander. The Amazing Alexander. He gave us dolphin balloons for free. At this reminder, Cove smiled faintly. Oh. Yeah. I wonder if he's ever there now. What is this game? Eh, it's just a visual novel. Maybe we should go out more often to check. Thanks, Glunker. Eh, I'm going okay. Maybe. That was the first time we ever went down that street together, I think. I miss Pop. He was a good balloon for that one afternoon I had him. Yeah. Hey, Cove. What were you going to name your balloon before it popped, I mean? You never told me. Oh. Huh. I don't know. I can't remember what Kid Me was thinking. Probably something obvious like Clipper. You couldn't help the way your own smile curled up higher at the sentiment. You just wanted, you wanted to say something else but couldn't quite think of what, and so just settled back into your seat. No, Dandy, that's not what's hap that's not the game. How are the cats doing? Eh, the cats are fine. They're just fine. When silence filled the car again, you returned your attention to the window. It was an absolutely gorgeous day. You leaned your face to the sunshine, tempted to close your eyes as the gentle rays warmed your cheeks. Jamie? Huh? You lifted yourself up a bit more, seeing your mom twisting her torso to face you, confused, from the front seat of the car. Next to you was nothing. Cove's car door was already open. You had reached the destination before you even realized it. Hmm. I was asking, what time should I pick you two up? Oh, um, four should be okay. That should give you enough time to finish your summer assignments, or at least make a large enough dent. Thanks, Mom. You hopped out of the car, remembering to grab your backpack at the last second. All right. Have fun, you two. We will. You closed the door, giving a little wave. She waved back. Uh, 
Uh, two of you went right to the door of the library. Go reached it first and tugged it open, stepping inside. He kept it propped open so you could pass through behind him. Uh, the air was much cooler inside the building than it had been for the few seconds you spent at doors. The space was filled with the soft din of papers being moved and whispered voices. Hey, you seem kind of distracted on the ride here. Just enjoying the day. Cove looked dubious at the vague answer. Okay. What? Don't you think it's nice out? I don't know. It's pretty much always nice out here. Your study buddy was standing at the front of the library by a long rack of magazines. Predictably, he was flipping through one with various sports players in the cover, looking intense enough to burst off the page. His head snapped up when you walked over, beaming widely. Yeah. Rent is very expensive these days. Rents are too damn high. Hey, Jamie, Cove! Hi, were you waiting for a while? Not super long. Derek put the magazine back in its place, then he gestured to the space at his side. Most of the tables were empty, only a few people leaving through books. There's plenty of room. In unspoken agreement, the three of you started moving towards the seating area. Derek taking two steps for every one of Cove. <laughs> oh, guess what? I'm pretty sure I've mastered the fake shot. I'll show you some other time. Derek looked over to the gauge to the level of interest. Do you know it? Um. Soccer's not really for me. How does it go? Derek's eyes flashed with excitement as he explained. That is a lot dandy. Just clunker? Ooh, that sounds pretty cool, just clunker. Living next to library? That would be nice. Living that living right next to the library? That would be pretty good. That would be that'd be awesome. Okay. Well, you move the ball like you're going to go one way. Then, he demonstrated by running a few steps ahead, showing off some fancy footwork. You do it like this, so it does it like that. You laughed, bobbing your head as a, at his attempt to get the trick across with no ball. Shh! The three of you looked over to the checkout desk. The librarian stood behind it and was wearing a deep frown. You were apologetic. You mouthed sorry and she sighed before turning back to the book she was reading. Derek scratched his cheek, choosing not to let that derail things. Oops. <laughs> so, what are you guys working on? You had yet to start a single assignment, sadly. Not that you hadn't tried. It just took a lot of time for you to understand what was being asked. Anyway, you had the assignments you needed to finish in your backpack. Now is the best time to choose which one to start with. I think I'll work on my history assignment. We have to do this timeline thing. It made sense to work on that while you were here, since you'd probably need to consult the reference books. This looks like my library. I imagine this looks like a lot of libraries, Clunker. Honestly. There's some summer reading, too. I have to go through an assigned book, but I'm going to do that later since it doesn't need extra references or anything. 
I've already finished the reading. Oh? It's not that long. And it was way more interesting than last year's book. Good to know. What about you two? I've got a few worksheets. They look pretty easy. But my school gave us three books to read. Can't they stick with just one? I'm also doing the timeline. North Carolina? Yeah. You can imagine North Carolina wouldn't be too bad. You all found a table close to the tall bookshelves and set up camp. Within seconds, pencils and folders and books were strewn out on the surface. So, hold on. Chantel wants her fan. All right, I will go get Chantel's fan. <laughs> Let her know I'm coming. All right, I'm back. What game are you doing after this? Uh, I mean, I've still got a few more weeks of this left, Icky. I've got a lot of this game left to get through, Icky. Afterwards, I'm thinking I might do the game Validate, which is a uh, straight up dating sim. Anyway, here's a question for Americans here. Are summer assignments like a common thing in the US? Cause like, girl, I don't think I ever had summer assignments. Like, is that actually like, is that a thing? It just seems weird. Elden Ring. Uh, hey, Harlem. I don't think I'll be doing uh, Elden Ring now. Every summer in grade school for one. Weird. That's so weird. Like, that wasn't a thing in Canada. 
Like, I don't remember that being a thing here in Canada. At least not in Ontario. Yeah. Summer? That's, you know, do whatever the hell you want for summer, you know? You focused on your work. You needed to take this opportunity to finish your work. Otherwise, you'd be struggling to get everything done on time. You checked the requirements on the homework sheet your teacher had given you, then opened up your textbook to the pages you needed. After some time, Cove shifted in his seat, twisting his back as if trying to work some work knots out of it. Feeling antsy? You paid enough attention to Cove to recognize when he was no longer feeling comfortable. Yeah, I'm gonna wander for a I'll wander around for a bit. Talk to you later. See ya, I'm gonna stay here. I'm making good progress. I'll stay too. You didn't want to break your concentration and have to get back into it. How's your assignment coming along? Next week is last day for summer? Oh, that's true. Uh, Derek flashed you a grin. It's whizzing by, no problems. How about yours? It's closer to being done than it was this morning. Hey, at least you're moving forward. Hmm? But weird to think we'll be back at school soon, huh? Yeah, new school year. Are you looking forward to it? Wouldn't say I was looking forward to it, but this year's gonna be the year. The year of what? Right. The year I'm on the team. He pumped his fist in the air and momentarily became too loud for a library again. The team? Which one? Football. Or soccer. You don't know which? Nope. Hmm. Thing is, I haven't figured out how I'm going to pick. I'd have more time to practice and get real good if I stuck with just one. I don't know. Uh, it was too hot. Summer was too hot. Luckily, I do have central air, so... But, anytime I had to step outside of the house. Too damn hot. Do what makes you happy. I'm happy playing both, but I'd be happier being better. But hey, how about you? What's new school year got in store for you? Naps, if I'm lucky. Hell yeah. Napping. I get it. Just don't get caught. You continued swapping visions of the year ahead until Cove returned. With a start, you realized that a solid 15 minutes had slipped by. It had only felt like a few moments. Deck garden? Ah, cool. Ah, that's pretty cool, Leaf Mud. With fresh minds, you all turned back to your work. The sound of shuffling dragged you out of your head. You looked up, surprised to see Derek packing up. You're done? Derek casually shrugged, but you could tell he felt proud to be the first finished. Uh-huh. Told you it wasn't anything hard. What are you gonna do now? Get my knockers out in my Halloween outfit. Hurrah! You wondered how Derek was going to spend, spend his newfound freedom. Maybe. I could look over what you're doing. Maybe I've got some tips that'll help. You nodded your head yes. I gotcha. Yes. I gotcha. With a smile, Derek leaned over your part of the table. He took some time to get to the to get the gist and point you in the right direction, before turning it back over to you. Derek leaned on the back of his feet. Okay, I'm gonna look around while you guys finish. See you. That, that's pretty cool, Leaf Mud. 
uh, stayed up all night in school nights and fell. No, nah. I never fell asleep in class. Zoned out, maybe. But like in retrospect, I probably just had ADHD. <laughs> You know, like, like, looking back, yeah, there were times where I'm pretty sure that I uh, did kind of zone out in school, but I think that, like, i pretty sure I probably do just have, AD, like, probably did just have ADHD, and that was probably what caused me to zone out a bit. Spicy cheese hot dogs. All right. Bye. Bye. See you. Later on, Cove shifted in his seat, closing his book as he looked over the notes he'd been taking. Glancing away, you contemplated what you had done thus far, too. You had finished most of the assignments. Graphic I like graphic novels. You weren't sure if you had done it correctly, but it was progress. Derek's advice made it easier in the end. Are you about ready? It's almost four. Yeah, I think so. Come on. The both of you gathered up your books, and after returning the ones you'd used for reference to their proper shelves, set off to find wherever Derek had wandered off to. You're supposed even reference books. You're supposed to put back on the uh, return cart. Let the uh, library employees, usually the pages, actually put the books in their places. He was in the biographies section. His back was to the two of you, one hand above his head and the other supporting himself against the shelf as he strained to grab one of the books. Hey Derek, we're ready. Okay. Oh, okay. He glanced towards the sound of your voice, then up towards the shelf he was trying to reach. You followed his gaze, then took the book off the shelf for him. Uh, here you go. You held the book out for him. He just stared up at you, speechless. Until he eventually accepted the book from your hand and squeaked out a small reply with flushed cheeks. Thanks. And then the three of you moved to the front of the library to wait for your rides. Bumpkinheads? Read it! I have that one, uh, Leaf Mud. Uh, Hicks and... Oh. Roll? Heads up? Yes. Uh, it was Rainbow... It was Rainbow Ro Rainbow Rowl, right? And uh, Faith Aaron Hex. Uh, pumpkin Heads. Uh, but yeah, I have Pumpkin Heads. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, like, I'm just a big fan of Faith Aaron Hicks. Um, as a Canadian, I'm kind of obligated to be. I'm, uh, obligated to be a fan of her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, Pumpkin Heads is adorable. You stood close to the window and let out a content sigh, feeling the rays warm you from the slightly chilly library interior. Uh, Strawberry, yes, we are moving. We are officially moving. Uh, late October. near the, Right near the end of October. Got any plans after this? Gonna work on my technique. Can't get rusty while school's out. That answer was inevitable. Technique for what? Soccer. How about you two? The words you two echoed in your mind. You knew what Derek meant, but why was it bringing a smile to your face to be linked with Cove, even in the most tenuous circumstance? Nothing planned. Me neither. Oh, that's my dad's car. Derek lifted a hand to wave, pushing the door open and heading towards the blue pickup truck waiting in the parking lot. Talk to you later. So, I mean... 
No. <laughs> Can't say I'm excited, but... Uh, Barbara. Apparently the place does come furnished. So... Might be getting rid of the bed I have right now. I'll be keeping my computer desk for sure. See you, Janie. Bye, Cove. You watch Derek jog off before scanning the area for your mom. Did you get everything done? Yeah, I've only got to get some thicker paper to draw the final draft on. I saw you're basically done. He smiled, impressed. You felt pretty good about that. Apartment life sucks. Eh. I like I don't really mind apartments living in apartments. I feel like I'll need to come back to the library again before summer's over. I'll come with you. I still have some stuff I can do. You smiled at the idea. Despite not working on the same thing, it'd be nice to have some company. I'm good with that. Hey, do you want to do something with me after this? Um, not really. No, I'm not really looking at RV. Thanks, Leaf Mud. Yeah, hope place driving. I haven't actually seen the place we're moving to. Uh, I think sometime next week, uh, we're just supposed to go check it out again. And I'll be, uh, going to check that one out. Cove seemed eager towards the offer. You hadn't exactly expected him to say no, but the agreement still made you happy. The two of you smiled at each other. Cove looked away after a second, and so you did too, fidgeting with the hem of your shirt. It wasn't long before you spied your mom's car coming down the road. There she is. All right. Time to go, then. You climbed into the car, sliding into your usual seats and buckling the belt. Hey, kiddos. Did you get a lot done? Yeah. Nice. The car shifted into action, and you watched as the library shrunk into the distance safe place. I'm glad for that, ghoul titties. It wouldn't be the last time you saw it this summer. Even better, you were going to have good company with you. You were already counting down the days. You fielded questions from Mom while you tried to juggle a conversation with Cove. When she learned you two were planning on returning, she immediately offered to give you a ride next time. You continued to answer Mom's questions about what you'd been working on, then told her about your plans to stick with Cove after getting back. There was something knowing in her smile that made you pause just for a moment. But soon enough, the trip was over, you had arrived back to your neighborhood. Cove had run over to his house real quick to drop off his stuff. You also made a pit stop to put your backpack away before heading out again. The two of you regroup, regrouped in the middle of the road, halfway between your houses. Don't stand in the middle of the street. With everything wrapped up, you could now freely enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Your conversation resumed as you both began walking down the street together. The afternoon came and went, dinner was eaten, and you were cleaning up the dishes left behind from it. Cove had elected to stay for the meal today. He passed you a couple plates to rinse in the sink. Even though he didn't have to, Cove asked to do at least something to help. You scrubbed the last of them and let out a satisfied sigh. Aww. Thanks, Leaf Mud. Thanks for sticking up for her. Uh, watching game all day. I mean, maybe Leaf Mud, but it wouldn't be a game like this. I, like, if I were to do that, I'd want to do it with something a little bit more interesting. always the possibility of there's always the possibility of like doing a live stream for Mass Effect I suppose
Yeah, that's a game that I'm fine playing for. That I'd probably be fine playing playing for hours on end. <laughs> yeah, Icky, she sometimes she has a bit of a temper. Thanks, cool titties. Uh, you scrubbed the last of them and let out a satisfied sigh. Okay, they're done. I'm going upstairs now. You addressed your guest for the evening. Are you going to come with me? Yeah. I don't have to go back till later. Take it easy, kids. Thank you for, for the help. Yeah, you're probably right, Paolo. When you got back to your room, you noticed your backpack from earlier. You figured it would be best to unpack the stuff you needed before going to bed. Koo flopped into your desk chair, and it spun around a bit as he got comfortable. He watched you contentedly as he walked across the room. He didn't need or expect you to try to entertaining him constantly. It was just nice to be near each other, even when nothing was going on. Yeah, I know that feeling. You hefted your bag up onto the bed. It sunk into the comforter. With that, you started to sort through books and pa paper packets. Not all of it were things you'd need anytime soon. A small, pi small pile of the most important assets began to grow out the side of your backpack until you'd gone over it all. Hmm? You had actually finished flipping through the content, but that wasn't all of your work. You instinctively pulled the opening closer to you and peered inside. A second look through commenced, and then a third, and then you began to open the smaller pockets. You were missing your history assignment! Jamie? By this co point, Coke could tell something was wrong. That was part of your summer work that you had gotten done, and now it was gone. It hadn't been that noteworthy before, but the bag wasn't really zipped when you had first began to look through. The work could have fallen out somewhere if you had it in the first place. Need to cook. And I'm trying to get out of it. Yeah. I get that one, Leaf. Leaf. Your stress level shot up. It was gone, and now you're going to have to replace everything you did for it. My history work isn't in my backpack. At your word, Cove jumped out of his seat. No way! Oh crap! Is there somewhere we can look? The bag was kind of open, so... He went sympathetically. That left a lot of options for where it might be, most of them bad. You made a sudden bolt for the other side of your room. You started to scour the spot the backpack was originally left in. With nothing in sight there, you extended the search to the rest of the space. Cove did his best to stay out of your way while keeping an eye open for your missing work. It was a frantic and ultimately fruitless effort. Your assignment wasn't here. Oh, uh, alright, good night, uh, ghoul titties. Let's check downstairs. It might still be in your house someplace. Fine. How are you? Why, hello again. Is everything all right? You told your mom what was going on. I unpacked my bag and one of my assignments wasn't there. I am so sorry. What's missing? An assignment for school from the library today. Mom's eyebrows raised with concern at the answer. That's a pickle. I'll call right now. They might I think they might still be open. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Just leave it to me. Cove, honey, can you tell us if there was anything you noticed? You were with Jamie, right? I saw the assignment when Jamie had it out of the library. I don't remember them putting it away, but I'm pretty positive there was nothing left on the table when we were done. He spoke resolutely. Before now he hadn't considered that something might have been left behind. You had felt the same when leaving, though it was hard not to second-guess things now. Uh, your mom re-entered the scene a few minutes later. The look on her face was not promising. Well... So I got a hold of one of the librarians. They don't have any papers with your name on them. Not that they could see anyway. I'm sorry. Thanks for trying. Of course. Sorry I was a bust. It's not your fault. 
Jimmy, hey, let's go over to my house. I can check my bag. Maybe I took it when we were packing up and didn't notice. Good idea. You got the impression this wasn't just about another place to look. You were stressed over the situation here. He was trying to give you an out. Let's go. Cove nodded and made his way to the door. Your mom stood by with creased, eye creased brows. Take care, kids. Good luck. Bye, moms. You briskly made the trip across the street, and in less than a minute you were going through the threshold, threshold of Cove's house. Cove had been in a rush earlier today, too. His backpack was tossed on the couch without a thought. No one had moved it since then. You can sit down, or anything. I'm gonna look. He lifted up the backpack and unzipped it in a fluid motion. You were left to wait as he rooted around inside with an unexpected level of seriousness. You were actually calming down now. There was definitely some panic earlier, but you'd had a little time to sort your thoughts. Whether you found it or not, you'd be able to make things work. Still, it wasn't possible to stop Cove in his quest, so you tried to relax in the meantime. Hey, Brooke. Eventually, he sighed heavily. Cove's arm was still tucked away inside, but the search was over. Sorry. It was obvious there wasn't much of a chance Cove somehow had, had it this whole time. You just shrugged. That's all right. He dropped the pack back to the floor unceremoniously and spoke with a cautious tone. Are you okay? Is it? You're really okay? I really am. I can get another copy and rewrite the stuff. It's nice of you to ask about it. That's cool. I'm glad. Cove laughed lightly and you noticed a small shake to it. He was clearly relieved you were going to get through this. It was sweet. He had been more upset about the loss than you. Um, I think it's admirable how you can keep it together like that. You were flattered he thought so. Oh. Cove was someone you were close with, that's true, but you hadn't expected him to say you were admirable. That was it was nice. Then the moment was interrupted by the piercing ring at the Holden home phone. You wordlessly stared at one another with raised brows. Cove's mouth formed a tiny frown. Kira appeared from the hall on the far side of the living room, summoned by the noise. Hey, yeah. Hey, Cove. Hi, Jamie. I didn't know you were here. She strolled on past. Your eyes followed her. Cove's mom answered the call, giving a chipper greeting to whoever was on the other end. A few uh-huhs and mm -hmm's later, Kira thanked the person and placed the phone down once more. Jamie, that was your ma. She said your stuff was in the car. What? <laughs> really? That's what I was told. Now I'll just return to the guest room. You can have your privacy. Ko's face cycled from shock to sour as his mom made her escape, laughing. He shook the interruption off and refocused on you. They've got it. As you guessed, this wasn't going to be a big deal. They've got it. Co smiled crookedly and shrugged one shoulder. We should probably head to your house. Your moms might want to talk to you. Yeah, my parents really care about me. They had kept searching even after you left, and because of that, it all worked out. Cove nodded in agreement. Cove, it means a lot that you stuck with me. Thanks. He brightened up with sparkling eyes. Don't worry about it. Anytime, Jamie. While stepping toward the door together, there was a thought in your head that you knew to be true. You were going to be there for one another, with the small things and when it came to the big things. Yay! Alright. Such a large audience I have. All right. So that's a good place to stop for this episode. Two hours. It's a good place to, to end it.
wonder if there's any, uh... Still no release date for the, uh, Derek DLC. Yeah! I'm not! Like, it's gonna take two hours for... Like, Escapade and Soiree will both take an hour each, so that's two hours. And then Summer Ended, that's another hour. And then I've got... I would assume another ten... Uh moments for being 18 so that's probably another 10 hours so 10, 15, 15. yeah I've probably got a solid 15 hours left uh, in this game Icky I would guess oh hey porch drifter So yeah, yeah. I would guess probably a solid fifteen, uh, fifteen more hours before I actually finish this game. That's uh, there's a lot of reading, a lot of dialogue. Like if it was just like if I was just playing on my own, I'd probably be able to get through it in half that. Maybe even less, just because I'm a quick reader. But, hey, Hamburger Eyes. You're here right for the, uh, right in time for me to, uh, to hit the end of the stream. You got here just in time for the end of the stream, Hamburger Eyes. Alexis, this game does have a lot. That's how visual novels work. <laughs> like, ultimately, Alexis, that's just how a visual novel works. It's all dialogue. Sorry, hamburger. Don't go. I've been, I've been on here for two hours already. So. This is the game. Uh, you missed parts of the stream. Well, it's gonna be. Yep, you, know, you can rewatch the stream. You can just go ahead and rewatch for any parts you missed, Alexis. Uh, yeah, I am about talked out. Off to cook. All right. Uh, have fun with cooking leaf mud. And uh, everyone else game, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, obviously, I'll be going, uh, I'll be doing a regular live uh, tomorrow again. Uh, tomorrow evening sometime. So, you know, you'll still be able to catch that. And uh, for now, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So...